congratulations, everyone. I'm going to call this Thank meeting you. to order at 6:10. We do indeed have a quorum. I believe the only person we're missing is Sarah. Seven. Yeah. Um, let's see. Meeting purpose. We're going to have a, I, what I hope is a, a good, productive um, subcommittee discussion. The purposes of such and, and some particulars, <clears throat> um, and also. Uh, a principal's presentation. That's what I plan on. Okay. Um, I'm going to move right into public comment. The board welcomes comments but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. <clears throat> comments must be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are called upon. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreements with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. With that, I open the floor for public comment. No? <clears throat> I'm going to give it a silent count of five. I have silently reached five. <laughs> All right. Seeing none, I am going to go ahead and move on. Um, some housekeeping things here. The date of the June board meeting, um, it conflicts with senior night. Is that right on the calendar? So um, I don't know if we want to move to a different day that week or a different week, but keep the, you know, the, the Wednesday at 6 rhythm. Um, everybody's grabbing their phones. I feel like I should do the same. So it's, it's June twelfth. Correct. Is when we had it scheduled. Correct. I was gonna I was gonna have to miss that meeting. So if we did it later, that work for me. How know. do people feel about the following Wednesday, the nineteenth? Sounds good. <clears throat> that is Juneteenth? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, are there, is that an objection or just a, a note? No, just a note. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. That works. Going once, yep. going twice. <clears throat> uh, can I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Moved by Katya, seconded by Ryan. This is uh, moving our June board meeting date to the 19th, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Oh, Extensions? Sorry. Just deleted this. <clears throat> <You> <laughs> Just deleted all as <laughs> unanimously. <laughs> that was easy. Well. Uh, I would need the annual in front of me. Wait, where's May? R.E.S. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's a quarterly meeting. Yeah. Rain tree okay. on in June. In June. And we're okay. moving that one. Next week is the high school with the RTCC meeting. Yeah. Next week, next month. Um, June is brain tree. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, so this next one uh, requires an admission from me that in my draft folder of emails, there sits an email to all of you asking you to watch a webinar training that um, we were going to discuss. It still sits in my draft box. <laughs> you have not received it. Um, so unfortunately, I need to move that to the next time. But the, the one that, because I kind of feel like it's a good idea in this, um, in these couple of months to kind of go back to basics. So um, the webinar having to do with open meeting laws. Um, 
what we can and can't do, when we can and can't meet, <laughs> why we can and can't go into executive session, all that fun stuff. Um, so, you know, the discussion doesn't necessarily have to be a long and involved one, but if we could all plan to watch that training before, or that webinar before the next meeting, and I will send a link. All I have to do is press send. Um, okay, subcommittee discussion. So, uh, first and foremost, I want to point out that on our annual agenda, this is the month in which we would be Thank discussing you. an evaluation subcommittee. Um, uh, the superintendent evaluation, that's a process that, uh, you know, a new process we formally started this year that we're ending now, that we voted we wanted to continue. Um, and we need a subcommittee of, I, I'd like to say three, but you know we didn't say there needed to be a requirement, of people who want to be um, working with the VSBA um, through that process. This past year it was Chelsea, Chelsea and, and Sarah. And Sarah. So I don't know if Sarah wanted to continue. I don't know. I don't um, know. But I, I will continue just for continuity's Great. sake. Great. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Are there others that are interested in serving on that subcommittee? And do you want to talk a little bit about what the time commitment was? Um, well, <clears throat> it really wasn't that that much because we contracted with the VSBA to do to send out a, a survey, um, and they just did it. They just did it all. So we just um, checked in with the gal that was doing that. But we didn't have to. I mean, and that was we did it over Zoom, not Zoom. Yeah, I think it was Zoom actually. We did it remotely. Um, so it was not a huge time commitment. Um, and then. It was like 15, 14 or 1500. Um, yeah. And what's the value of it? What, what do we get from that? It's a formal evaluation process. Um, mm -hmm. So they help us put together what uh, information we felt we needed to gather, the groups of people we wanted to gather it from. Am I it's specifically, about well, it's specifically about evaluation of the super. Right, right. They do, they... Which is also our own job. Right, right. And, um, and they sort of, they already had the survey. It's all, it was all done. So we just reviewed it and said, yeah, that looks good. Well, they consolidated, they mm -hmm. kind of put it into... Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she collated all the results in the end. Yeah. Um, but, and the way we did it this year, we didn't really, we, we were just sort of doing a test run of it. It wasn't Lane's real evaluation. Right. Um, this time around. Right, but um, we had decided as a board that this is how we wanted to, if I'm remembering correctly, <coughs> and if you feel I'm misspeaking the past, let me know, um, but that this was the process that we wanted to continue in formally. I think we're watering it down a lot. It's not just sending out a survey and then tabulating the results because I know um, at least when I, uh, what I heard from Chelsea is that there was a lot of, there were quite a few meetings and, and um, work well, put into it. I mean. Lane, help me out. How how frequently we we met? Well, we took because basically what we did was we then took an evaluation, went and Chelsea did this. So the committee didn't do it. Chelsea did it. Chelsea took uh, an evaluation template that Lane used with administrators, mm -hmm. and she uh, put it. She put the information from the survey into that template. 
So, and that template is done now. Um, although it's done with Lane's information, but we could, we can, I mean, that will be the, the task of yeah, the, the committee. The, the, right. the big yeah. part of it was that there was a, a specific focus on certain of the ends. And then um, in the discussions, it also changed kind of the interpretation of like the fine arts, the social studies, and the life skills. Um, and that, that's reflected uh, in the, the updated ENDS report, uh, those new changes. So to carry over, so, yeah. But the real job that the board, this committee is gonna have to do is we didn't do the other part, which is basically, if we're gonna use policy governance, the way you evaluate your superintendent is you use your ENDS report and your monitoring reports. And so right now, and that was part of the reason why Lane said, I'm not, I'll help you with this process, I'll go through this process with you, and I'll kind of do it with you, but if it's I'm changing stuff midstream, it's hard to right. adapt. Right. right. But right. but I want to be careful here because I, I think that what we had been discussing at the time is that that wasn't enough for us, and that's part of the reason we <laughs> wanted to, to right. find someone to kind of foster a different way of evaluation. And, and mm -hmm. in the contract, this one, the, the process I just went through, the, the line says, you know, evaluate it annually. And I think, again, the policy governance does have very strict rules, but it also <laughs> is not one size fits all. And if we feel Part of the reason I thought that we wanted to go through this evaluation process is because we wanted feedback, not just from what we're getting, what we're getting in yep. those reports, but also from those survey results mm -hmm. as well, um, to have more information to work with. Yeah, to be less constrained than I think the process has been. Well, so, did, did we find, as a board, did we find the process helpful? <clears throat> the information gleaned from that survey helpful? That's one question, and, and then a follow-up to that is, did Lane find it helpful as far as professional development and doing his job better? <clears throat> because if he didn't find it helpful and we didn't find it particularly helpful, why are we doing it? But if we did find it helpful, then let's, let's like continue with it and see if we can make it more of what we need. So, but we, I think that one value that it brings to us is it gives us another lens of perspective on what we think the ends and what the priorities are for <clears throat> for improvement. I I do see Lane's point about like it change. It's it if if the superintendent is being evaluated on the ends. I guess the value to me in the in hiring the consultant is that it can help inform what we create for the next year and what the priorities are. One of the one of the ways to do that is it's not just the ends, it's also the evaluations on the executive limitation reports. So one of the possibilities is that if you're finding that there are specific bits and pieces of information that you want more of, that's where you go in on those uh, executive limitations reports and make the standards in there, the provisions, a little bit more explicit about what you're looking for. Um, that's how the, how the process works, and that might be helpful. The, the evaluation itself, what the VSBA uses, it basically mirrors our policies, or a lot of them. With the exception, there were a few things that we don't really do because of the way that we govern our, our district versus other ones, where it, there wasn't a real connection to our policies. Um, and, and during this policy governance training, one of the things, because some other boards had had tried using that that process is 
sometimes, you know, you're you're relying on on cabinet staff to evaluate the superintendent, but sometimes they don't know exactly. They don't know necessarily what what he everything that he's doing. Well, you we know were what also I mean? surveyed. Right, we were, were surveyed. Right, and probably, I mean, if you remember from the survey results, the folks who sort of were the had the, the lower ratings. It was all board board all the results coming from board members and and from the from cabinet because it was basically the cabinet was surveyed the board was surveyed lane did a all selfie direct, bell, all direct reports, all direct like reports yeah. right um, and so and it, then a self evaluation and then a self evaluation yeah so and really I mean I know I know there's some disagreement about whether or not our policies uh, give give us enough feedback on the performance of the superintendent but if we're feeling like our policies aren't giving us enough feedback then we need to then narrow our policies to give us the feedback that we're looking for it sounds like you're arguing against doing this uh, I, do, I, I think we either need to change our policy or we need to use our policies and, and adapt our policies if we're not getting the information or the assurance that we need. And I think some of the other, I would say, maybe issues that folks might have had had more to do with uh, communication and maybe communication style. And that means that we as a board need to do a better job of providing that feedback in the moment or after a meeting or uh, asking a question rather than sort of wondering or or if people hear things that they're not going through the channels or communicating to find out information before you jump to a conclusion. So oh, anyway. I, but. So I, I hear the same thing that maybe mm -hmm. this you, you don't think this is the process to use. I propose that we still do need some direction or assistance or consulting on how to do what you're saying we need to do. And especially with a new superintendent coming in, we need to be prepared to figure out which questions we want to ask to make sure we're getting the information we want to get and know the information that we want to get and that's work that we need to do and I have a sneaking suspicion we need help <laughs> with mm -hmm. that or we would have figured it out already yeah um, well I I I am I would propose we have a new superintendent coming in he is familiar with policy governance but he has had no training Mm -hmm. The VSBA now offers mentors, so one of the, the gals that's doing the, the current policy governance training is offering to mentor new superintendents who are using policy governance, because it, it does take a little bit to get used to it and to understand what you're doing. Um, and so I. I think we're going to have to. We do need to sit down and and have a have a discussion with the superintendent and and sort of one. He's got to understand what the expectations are because it is out, stated real clearly of, uh, in our policies. But in our policies, it's it because 
our policies are what he has to do. But and, and what I'm is saying how is, how he gets we don't evaluated. know what our expectations are. Because if we did, we would have been completely satisfied with the evaluation that we've been doing. But we brought in this well, consultant. Then Okay. So I think that perhaps what this is leading me to believe that the July meeting is usually meant to be a retreat of some sort. And it seems to me that might be an opportunity for this group to sit down without the superintendent and say, hey, what do we feel like we weren't getting? How can we change either our policies or the executive limitations what are questions we can ask of the report when they come, and maybe even be our own consultants if we don't want to invest that money because that particular process wasn't great. And I think a mentor for him is great, but I'm more concerned about us doing our job and getting what we need. Right, mm -hmm. and that means we need to understand how to work with our policies or, as I've said to the group several times, come up with another governance system if you feel like this system doesn't work, or let's spend the time and energy to learn how to use the governance system that we have in place. Mm -hmm. Because that's been part of what has been the difficulty, is it does take a little bit of time <clears throat> to understand how to make those expectations clear, how to work with the ends, how to look at a monitoring report, and we have gotten stymied in, in not really doing that, that process. And, and we either, you know, if we don't want to do it, then, you know, we should throw these out and let's go through the process of adopting a new set of policies to, to govern the board and the district. But we, we, part of, I think, what makes the evaluation process work is if we understand how the system, how to govern. And, and so anyway, I, I think. I think we're agreeing with each other. Yes. And I think that the subcommittee that I brought up at the beginning of this particular agenda item is eight people strong. <laughs> and I think the first subcommittee meeting of those eight people should be at that July retreat. And I think it should be, is this the way we want to govern? And if it is, how is it going to lead us to a superintendent evaluation? Because this is a big year, right? This is the first year with Michael. Mm -hmm. We want to be, we were very clear, and I brought to you guys about the contract when, you know, the particular term about we wanted him to go through an entire evaluation process. We need to be really clear with him, but before we're clear with him, we need to be clear with ourselves what we're going to base that on. Right. Where we're going to get that evaluation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then everyone's going to feel uh, satisfied. Thank you. There is no subcommittee. No subcommittee. We are the subcommittee. We are the subcommittee. Whew, that was hard fought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything they want to say about this particular topic? Well, we I thought we were going to talk about other subcommittees we are. too. We are. I meant on okay. the evaluation. Oh, okay. Um in terms of other subcommittees, so I did, uh, and it kind of this is a good segue because I want to talk about maybe nudging one of our policies around, which has to do with subcommittees and their purpose, um, that they're used, what is that, four point, I think it's 4.5 or 4.6, sparingly, mm -hmm. okay. which I think is a tricky word, um, because there are subcommittees right now that exist, the ENDS subcommittee, right? The what are what are other ones? Guys, help me. The negotiations, standing facilities, two of ownership them. Ownership linkage. Ownership linkage, definitely. Facilities we put on hold. Yeah. yeah, and because we wanted to talk about what the real purpose and function mm -hmm. of it was. Yeah. Is there a policy committee? There is not a policy committee at this time. There is not a budget committee at this time, for instance. Uh, Finance. Sorry. Finance. I, 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 finance. Mm -hmm. 
or, but yeah. I didn't mean to correct you. I was just in my head. Yeah. It just came out. I apologize. I love it. <laughs> Much nicer work. I'll put you. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. I think that's what we had currently. So I think. <clears throat> You know, the negotiation committees are standing. It doesn't mean they always have the same members. We reelect every year or we volunteer every year. Um, but if it's a negotiations year, we have to have those committees. They're somewhat standing. Both the ownership linkage and the ends committee. I'm just going to start battling until someone interrupts me, but I'm going to do a stream of consciousness here. Um, it seems to me those should be always their committees ready to meet if there's something to task them with, like when we put out those letters to the community, because we knew who the ownership linkage committee members were, that's who contacted, mm. I can't think of his name right now, I'm very sorry. Ben, the, the, ben Merrill, thank you. Um, and started that process of getting it together. The ENDS committee ties into what we're talking about in terms of policies. I think that also needs to be the ends committee, committee, I think, needs to be the entire board. I mean, and we have, we, uh, again, I would say the board is sort of, we kind of, we started a reevaluation of our ends, and we, that moved on to the fall, and then it's just sort of, again, our, our job is looking at the outcomes of the district and where we're going, and how we're evaluating them and are they the right ends and we tend to get mired in other business and and well, the lose purchase of a graduate was kind of also to help us yes tease that, those out. exactly exactly right and i think we that subcommittee that, and was then it sort of sat there for a year we're coming around to the year that i mean we produced at the end of June of last year and so what was the charge of that then, committee the well committee. we were gonna we were gonna look at the portrait of a graduate and then try and make the ends more specific because we had Lane saying he didn't he wasn't clear on what the ends were and so he needed more definition more specific specific you know, so if that charges. if that committee had a charge, which just sounds like it did, did that committee just kind of, kind of just did not meet? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it did. It, it well, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a no, separate was committee. A separate I was on it. Yeah. Rachel's separate. on it. Megan was on it. Um, we did meet a few times. Oh, the ends committee. The ends committee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you were yeah. there. Yeah. And I think um, <clears throat> I think we need to persist with that. Right, or and I think part, part of, the, of the reason it's a subcommittee is because it is very time consuming. And mm -hmm. in order to not make these meetings marathon, um, there is work that needs to be done in a group, open meeting as well. But in addition, this isn't just fluff, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is all work we need to be doing in addition to looking at our ends and making sure they're what we want them to be. I do think that subcommittee should remain a subcommittee to bring to the larger group once it's out of the weeds. Yeah. It's in the weeds now. And I don't think this room with the full group once a month with all of this other stuff that is just as impo is important as well <clears throat> is the place to be in the weeds. The subcommittee was not to set the ends. It was to no. boil them down so that there, was, right. there, were, to decisions, so there were decisions right. for the board to make. Yeah. The, right. the subcommittee was not making any decisions. No. Right. It was trying to take that portrait of a graduate and try I mean, to it, come up with It some. sounds like there just either needs to be a recommitment to some of these subcommittees mm -hmm. and the individuals who are on them are recognizing that, you know, there is there is time commitment, an additional time commitment, and, and really like committing to that work. Um, so I think that's that's the like more general question we have to ask. Like what what's the um, capacity? Are people willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Are we people, you know, and then really recognizing like maybe setting a schedule just like we had when we had our 
superintendent search by this month we're going to bring this by this month it's this you know so you have actually a real set idea of, of your path forward with this committee rather than like oh I guess we'll meet and I think we're working on this but it was kind of quiet about this last month so let's skip it like nope you gotta meet who's currently on the ends committee Rachel, myself, and Ann. Thank you. And Heather. Megan was on it. Yeah, and I'm wondering if if what might help is if we got a consultant to help us <laughs> with that process. I think, I, I think I, we've I, had consultants and consultants and consultants, and we had we had Winston, and we've had the portrait of the graduate, and we now have the data we need, and we need to. Work with the data we we need to do it yeah yeah and the last meeting we had which admittedly was you know a while ago mm -hmm. but was very meaty I use that word a lot but fruitful um, foodie 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 okay <laughs> So I, I think you're right. I think it's about recommitment. I think it's about being very clear what the what the task is, what the goal is, and um, what the timeline is. So what is the goal? Does anyone, does anyone want to join that committee? The goal is to bring a draft ends policy for the board to review and, and adjust. Possibly adopt. Yes. Review, adjust and get to a point where we can adopt a new ends policy that is more specific than the one we have. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think if we're looking to be more fruitful with our subcommittees, that there would be a monthly report out from our subcommittees letting the wider group know what, you know, even if it's just like a two minute, like we met on this day and we did you know this was the work that we got done and we're at this step now like just that I think that kind of helps with that accountability piece of like well I have to report back to the board so we should meet and make this you know keep moving our steps forward so those three members of the ends committee are you um, interested in remaining yeah. I am as well so um, anyone else want to join I'd be willing to join if I'm new. So, yeah, I think it's an opportunity for learning. Great. Thank you. That subcommittee now has four members. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and uh, we will meet before the main meeting and then report out. Can't wait. Great. <laughs> Ownership linkage <laughs> subcommittee, which again, I think is one that is a standing committee in that it's always hovering around so that we know who to go to beginning of year letter to the community being one of them we had talked about it's on our annual agenda we've been ended the year letter too we did a mm -hmm. mid year we yeah yeah so that's coming so up. that's got to be soon um an important part of that will be um involvement in the strategic plan mm. um we need to create a five-year strategic plan Did we just do wasn't that what we no, that's the portrait of a graduate. The next what step is strategic plan. What do we do plan. with Winston, then? Isn't that some big strategic yeah. thing? Yeah, the board, it, with our policies, we don't get involved. No, but the, they in should the at least be members of the plan. board on the, it'll be a big community outreach to get all of this information, like to collaborate on this. This is not like a top-down thing. It's a community conversation. So I really do think members of the board need to be involved in that. So I just right. said it's an, like an upcoming project that we will be asking members of the board to be mm -hmm. present mm -hmm. and invested in. And our ends should be yep. done in time because the ends right. are what drive the yes. strategic plan. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting nervous about. Is and they have to be ready so that if he has to make budgetary decisions right. starting in October <laughs> or right. fall. Exactly. Right. So that's where our ends committee needs to be motoring along if we are going to make some changes to the ends so that... Yeah. If this new new superintendent needs to make a strategic plan for reaching the ends, he's got to know what he's yep. what he's so, right. For. But that's separate from the ownership linkage 
committee. Yes. That's yes. about community communication. Mm -hmm. That committee currently, oh, that was Megan as well, wasn't it? And you and me. It wasn't you and me and Megan. Mm -hmm. So we, I think a committee should be at least three people. Um, because I'm on the ends committee and I'm spread thin right now, I would like to step away. I won't take it personally. Um, <laughs> I hope you don't. Um, so those those are two seats on that committee that I um, Who wants to join me? would love to fill. Sam, you, Sam, wonderful. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll work with gotcha. Um, we can put that up to Sarah as well. Let's remember that's a, a, another person to lasso in. I'll do it too. And Ryan, thank you very much. New ownership linkage subcommittee. So if you guys could plan to meet what relatively you soon. Uh, I was in, on one, but then I got off. So no, no, I think Chelsea. Because Chelsea I was sitting in the, at a gymnastics practice. It was me and Megan. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you could plan to meet relatively soon so that one of you could reach out to Ben, if you want to go that route to help with the letter, although we kind of have We wrote it last it. time. We did write it last yeah. time ourselves. So take a stab at it. We can do it. But write because letter. we want it for okay. the end of the year. Who's you want to get a draft in front of us. Ben Merrill ben does, Merrill. he's like, um, he, he helps us PR. with PR stuff. Oh. Oh. Uh, if okay. there was a draft you wanted to share <laughs> for our next meeting, no, that would be amazing. Draft letter mm -hmm. for May. Okay. Draft letter for the May meeting for us to look at because we'd want a chance to. Yeah, we want it, and we want it for June 1st. That committee. I'm suggesting it as a goal. Can I just ask one more clarifying question? Please. <clears throat> Can you confirm that that thing that we did with Winston was the last strategic plan? Yes. I, uh, yes, it was, it was a strategic plan, but it wasn't, that wasn't the strategic plan that, we used the he used parts plan. of it. Yeah. Right. And we adopted it. A lot of it was already completed, uh, what was in the plan um, by the time when it came out. But no, we use a continuous improvement plan usually for our strategic work. I foresee you getting many questions like Katya's from community members because I think there will be yeah, I feel like we just, confusion. Yeah. Winston, I don't I wasn't here when Winston worked with you, so what year was that? What? I mean that feels like that was like ten years ago. Was, was it before was it COVID? During COVID? It, might have been it must have been during COVID. COVID. Or before sure COVID. No, COVID. not before because I joined yeah, at the maybe. start of COVID. So 2020? I think it was right at the start. No, it must have been 21 <laughs> or 22. Because, yeah. I don't remember this work. I'll look back in my phone. I have files if you hit me up tomorrow. I mean, I worked on the continuous improvement plan that year, but it, nobody called it a strategic plan. There are different things, which I will talk about when we present the continuous improvement plan tonight. Yeah. Yep. Ryan, we should just touch this and then try I to get yeah. date. Yeah. And those meetings do need to be warned. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah. does need to make to take minutes. They can be simple um, and and sent to Kyle. So if, <coughs> if you figure out a date, please make sure Kyle knows that. Thank you. Um, and I would recommend that they. It's easy to have them in the conference room there, and then there's a laptop there for you to use for people to join in if they want to. Makes it easy. Uh, others. Subcommittees, I, I just, subcommittees as a whole. Good for now. We're good for now. Are we good? This is enough work. Good. <laughs> and we're going to move on. Great. 2021. 2021. With strategic plan. <clears throat> Do you maybe want to forward, Heather, some stuff from Ben at some point? I'd I don't love to. Second, but um, just so she knows what we're referring to. Um, Brookfield principal. Um, Kara has respectfully requested to be rescheduled for next month as she's dealing with a student crisis emergency. Got it. Thank you very much for the update. Um, and I will be in touch with you and Kyle and Kara and we'll figure out the best. Uh, great. Voting machine research update. Lane? So there was a little bit of a write up in the. Um, superintendent's report that was emailed out a day or so ago also included the um, brochure for what was recommended by the the secretary of state's office of the elections uh, division 
in terms of you know what most of the towns are using. Uh, it's the Dominion Precinct 2 model that they recommend. Um, the cost is about 5,800 um, to have that. It's a one-time cost. There is about a five to six hundred dollar cost a year to update the software to match, you know, what the ballots are, and then there is a cost to have the ballots created each year. Those two costs, the costs for the programming and the cost for the ballots, are already in our budget. We have to pay for them to use the machine that we have now. Um, so they're not really anything in addition. Um, there's plenty of money in the year-end surplus as well as the operational reserve fund if this is something that the board wants to vote to do. Um, this was also vetted by our, our technology team um, as, as their recommendation. Okay. Good. So Sounds great. To make yeah. that happen, do we have to get that added to next month's agenda for appropriation or can we just pay for it out of reserves? So you can just vote right yeah. Yep. Okay. Decide. I, I would. I would. My recommendation is vote for, for out of surplus, and if if for whatever reason surplus isn't av available, allow us to do it out of operational reserve. And that's the the fifty eight whatever it is fifty eight hundred. Okay. I move that we purchase the Dominion model that the Secretary of State's voting department suggested we buy. Do I have a second? So moved. Oh, whatever. Katya. Seconded. So seconded. So seconded. <laughs> seconded by we, Katya. Do we have to say where how we're going to pay for it, or we can just say? <clears throat> I think it's understood. You, usually, you would say which account it comes from. I would say sir. I would say surplus. Amended out of surplus funding. Now I second that. Seconded by right. Katya yet again with the amendment. Further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Or aye. Raise your aye. Hand. aye. All of the above. Great. Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, self valuation policy 4.1. I know I sent the chart very late today, um, but policies are always available. Now, I would like to propose that we actually kind of sort of started this conversation. Um, earlier today, and we'll continue it at our July retreat when that is scheduled. Um, so I don't mean to shut down conversation, but this policy is about how we govern mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how we're doing at it. And if the previous discussion, if I read the room correctly, we don't get an A plus. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> we have plans. It's, it's um, in looking at the policy, does anyone have something they specifically want to? Um, I already said. I already said everything. Maybe that's right. why it was top of mind when I was, because I did this just before I arrived here. Exactly. So exactly. That's why I was. But. <clears throat> I think it might be, I mean, this, like you said, this might be a good thing. This might be good homework for us for our July meeting. Yes. Come, like, with this really flushed out as far as what we're, how we're feeling about it. And, Agreed. and, and, and <clears throat> to bring kind flushed of this. Out, not flushed out, whatever. Yeah. Um, bring this to that retreat. This mm -hmm. would be our homework there. There will probably be more. But, you know, keeping in mind that it's, personally, this chart is really helpful just because it, parses things out for me and it helps me organize it. Don't feel like you have to do the always, most of the time, some of the time, never. Sometimes it doesn't fit in there. It can be narrative. It can be, you know, phrases or words that, that come to mind. Um, but this is good homework mm -hmm. for the retreat. This is exactly what we need to figure out. Oh, first review of ENDS report emailed separately. That was challenging because I did not get that. What is meaning? It's it. it's right here. Yeah, but I haven't. Oh, you haven't read it, it right? yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they emailed it out today. I apologize. I thought thought it was going to be for Wednesday, but it was easy <coughs> enough to put in the data that I had. So I can probably give a brief overview, especially for the new board members. Yeah, yeah, that's and then the recommendation is um, I would read the clean copy that was yeah. emailed. Whatever reason, the <laughs> printer was printing the lines on stuff today. But the, the ENDS report, this is these are the goals um, that the board has kind of developed. It's kind of like the mission. 
um, what we're supposed to be achieving on behalf of the, 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 the community, on behalf of the students, and on behalf of the parents. Um, you know, they have things in there like, you know, all students will, you know, have acquire foundational knowledge in mathematics. So that's a pretty broad statement about what that means. And so it's the job of the, the superintendent. And that's an important point because when Mike gets here, he may decide to change those interpretations. Um, in my case, you know, I interpreted it to mean that we're in compliance with giving foundational knowledge to students as long as we're within, you know, three percentage points of, of the state performance. Um, and there's rationale and things that are in here that explain why that that was chosen based upon, um, you know, ed education research and things like that. Um, so this is really the reporting out. This is how we're interpreting what it means to be successful on these ends. And here is the data showing where we actually stand at this point in time. ENDS reports always look at the year behind. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with executive limitations reports. Mm -hmm. So they are not looking at 23-24, uh, they're looking at 22-23. And we have most of the data right now, there's still one or two pieces that we can't get from the um, state, most notably the graduation requirement, uh, graduation rates I have not seen yet. Um, For 23, they still Yeah, they they're still two their... years behind. Wow. Um, they were actually doing, I, I think they have the data ready. Um, they were revamping their website where you can get the data from um, for a couple of months. And it literally just came online. You could actually start to get the data again in the last week. And so um, Crystal's working on it, um, and we should have that information in there. You do have the new information from the revised interpretation that came out of the uh, sub evaluation subcommittee on fine arts that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get similar information about that, hopefully for life skills um, and social studies. Um, it's taken her a little bit of time to set that up for the first piece. Uh, the life skills, remember that is a new course this year. Um, so if you get data on it, it may just be semester one. Right. Again, and we're not looking at the year behind, but that's okay. At least, at least you'll have some data to see, to see what that looks like. Um, and then unless there's, there's questions on it, um, the other piece to, to remember is, again, same thing with executive limitations, is the superintendent gets to take a look at what the board policies are, gets to interpret what they need, has to provide you with a rationale for why they interpreted it that way, and then you get to decide if that rationale is reasonable. And if it's reasonable, then you know that's that's what stands. And so he may decide to come in and, and change what's there, and that's that's perfectly within his purview um, to have those discussions. But but the good data that's on there, you got the math, the ELA, you got the science, you've got the fact that the uh, overall population of our special education students has been declining for the last six to seven years. I thought um, all we the were data of, was looking really great. Yeah, we were one of the highest in the state. Um, we did get, uh, mm -hmm. last year we received one of the Newsweek's Best Schools Awards. This year we received two. Um, so there's been a significant amount of improvement over, the, over, over time. And for credit to the, um, the staff and the teachers, a lot of the improvements happened during COVID. Um, while the rest of the state and the, the nation was actually in decline. So. But this is a good, there's a second reading. Um, I'm going to update the, the remainder of the data that's available. Um, I'll get that to you probably about two weeks before uh, the board meeting, and that way if there's questions. Um, I'm happy to do a final kind of PowerPoint presentation on it. They usually take a long time if folks feel it's necessary. We did a mini one at the beginning of this year with, with the data that we had. And in that report, do we see where our students are stacking up against the state's minimum? So you got the state average. Yeah. And so actually, if you, you flip over, let's actually sure. look at one of them. Let's take a look. Uh, take a look at. Thank you. We've got the It'll be one of the earlier graphs. Let's take a look at the, the ELA. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing the overall state score that's in the orange. So what this is telling you is like in 2022, 43% um, of all the students in the state achieved proficiency in ELA. In the case of the Orange Southwest School District as a whole, a little over 50% achieved proficiency. So we're beating the state. 
where the blue line, you can see that as time goes on, there is a separation happening between between the yeah, state okay. and the um, OSSD. It means we're actually pulling ahead of the state as time goes along. So this was also the first year as far as the data went back um, 2021 in terms of ELA. I believe that we beat the state. Okay. And, so and quickly, do we have a sense of how this compares nationally? Because, I mean, 50% of proficiency, I mean, yeah, just that, that strikes me as unsatisfactory for anybody, right? So the, here's, here's the reality. Um, and again, these numbers started out low, like math started out at 11%, um, you know, five or six years ago, wow. overall proficiency. So they're up at like 38 or 39% now. Mm -hmm. um, compared to the state, we're doing pretty darn yeah, well. Yeah, and, com good. and compared also, I did the comparison to our surrounding mm -hmm. districts we are. That's good. But Vermont is in a different category um, than like Massachusetts. When I was in Massachusetts after 10 years of the MCAS, you know, it was not unusual, you know, the schools I was at um, in science, on average, the kids were, 90% of the kids were at proficiency in science. 95% of the kids were at proficiency in math and 98% were at proficiency in ELA. The difference being is that in Massachusetts, it's a high stakes test. There's something to lose. You don't graduate if you aren't successful on those, those three tests. I see. They also are some carrots there for them too, whereas if you perform admirably across, admirably, admirably, excuse me, across the three tests, uh, you get what's called the Sam and Abigail Adams Scholarship, where they will give you free tuition to the state schools. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of pieces. In Vermont, if the kid you know, doesn't ace the test or do well on the test, there is absolutely no consequence. And so one of the things that we've had to fight, especially in this district in the early years, was the, the idea that it was cultural, that it just doesn't matter, so why waste the time? Mm. So it took three or four years um, to get the teachers, the parents, and the, and, and, and the students on board with this idea that, no, we need you to take it seriously because it's providing us feedback with how you're doing, which is based upon how we're delivering instruction to you, and can give us information on what we need to adjust to make things a little bit better. Yep. So we're not quite there. There's not 100% buy-in that it's important to take it, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was uh, a few years ago. Right, so I, I would argue that our scores are probably, if, if everybody took it seriously, are probably a bit higher than what we're actually seeing. The only other quirk to point out is our science scores. Um, we are comparing our science scores to the state. Um, that's a little complicated um, and has to be looked at under a certain lens. Um, science is the only test that the final test is in 11th grade. Those 5, 8, and 11, those are the three years they test science. 60% of our students um, go off to the tech center as juniors which means that 60% of our students that have to take the science test do not have a science class mm. their uh, junior year. Right. And regardless of that, we're still pretty close to the state. But that is a hindrance, again, if that weren't the case, because most of the state's kids do not attend a technical center, um, our scores are probably actually a little higher if you took that into account compared to the state when they show up on the, the testing piece. Can you, um you, you probably can't. Can you manipulate the your results? Do you have access to them to say, take out all of the students who are at the tech center and yeah. just look at the high school's yeah, we scores? Yeah, we just have that to ask Crystal. I don't, know, I don't know how complicated it would be. Um, you're reducing the overall population. Yeah, so so there's still it. enough there that it, it's probably the trend lines over time are meaningful, but in terms of absolute meaning for a specific year because the population is so low, right, it, right. it wouldn't have a lot of validity, exactly. I guess it'd probably be the best word. Hmm. And well, we thank you for that. Yeah. I, um, I think my only concern is if the public sees that, you know, Proficiency is hovering around 50%, then they'd be less generous with the budget. But, and I think that would be the only incentive to 
you know, we talk about incentives not being there, uh, but the incentive is the public's fault. And it's, uh, it's, it's a benefit to the teachers, and it's one of the discussions that, that we've had in the past. Um, the highest paying districts in the country are the highest performing. Because when students are performing at a high level, folks that are invested in education move to those districts. And it sets up this feedback cycle of, okay, we're invested in education, you're doing a good job, we're willing to pay more, so you're able to build stronger and better and more advanced programs because they're willing to pay more, which improves the view of the schools, and so more people move in. And so you get this, this really positive feedback loop. So, you know, Belmont that I was at in 1992, um, and so this will put a, a number on it for you. Um, they were rated as number 75th in the entire country of the 26,000 high schools that are out there. Their salaries in that age in 1992 topped out over $100,000. But people for even for now. You know? yep. yeah. Thank you. Continuous improvement plan. Great. Um, Heather? Everyone, I've uh, distributed uh, uh, Vermont Continuous Improvement Plan template. It's a four page document, and I've also provided you with a 50 page document, which are, are our school improvement plans. Um, I'd like to present to you that these are not a strategic plan. The continuous improvement plan is a required document to receive federal funding through the title funds, so Title I, II, and IV, uh, which we call consolidated federal programs. We're compelled to have a safe and healthy schools goal. We're compelled to have an academic achievement goal, and we're compelled to have equity measures. However, this is not meant to be a full and robust strategic plan. It's meant to indicate how we will spend the money awarded to us. Mm -hmm. Whereas a strategic plan would include a vision statement, a mission statement, values, it would validate things we're going to continue doing that we're already doing. It would talk about um, paths for equity for every student. It would talk about pre-K all the way through senior project. And that will not be covered in this as we're saying, we have identified needs in ELA and mathematics and we're going to hire interventionists, right? We have identified that we need a new emergency plan. We're going to create it because that's specifically how we are going to target these funds. Mm -hmm. So this document is only four pages, right? It's nowhere near a full strategic plan. But I did also, the, it's linked in here, these 50 pages. And so what you have here is like page one through 12 is Braintree, and then the next 13 pages are Brookfield, and the next 14 pages are Randolph Elementary, and the next 11 pages are the high school. Mm -hmm. The tech center is not covered in this document. The tech center will be in what's called the CLNA, which is the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment, which is a whole nother assessment of like, what do we need to do um, to bring our numbers up? So you'll see referenced in the larger document, multiple times, one for each school, that our mathematics scores, as Lane said before, are in the range of 28% to 59%. Right, and our ELA are 41 to 75, depending on grade band. So we're setting a goal to say we want to see all our students at 70 percent, right? But honestly, we could do even better than that. But we want to get at least there, right? So that's the goal. And so we're saying, we give us this federal money. We'll make sure the intervention is happening, like tiered systems of support. That's the really the purpose of this document. Um, and uh, so we have our safe and healthy, healthy, healthy schools goal, which is to create these flexible and equitable learning environments. So we'll continue with MTSS, which is our multiple tiered systems of support. Um, and uh, we will continue with our pre-K measurements. Uh, we'll develop and train educators in restorative practices. We'll continue to grow our teacher mentorship program. 
Uh, we'll continue to uh, grow our advisory program, which is SEL, right, social emotional learning support, and we will develop our emergency operations plans. And so then you can see also we've indicated how we will measure these, including um, understanding of our emergency operations plans, uh, our youth risk behavior data, right, when we're looking at safe and healthy schools, that's data we're using to say we need to be focused on social and emotional wellness, um, our climate surveys, and then we report on how we will fund it. And so we say Title I, which is for academics, Title II, which is for professional development, and Title IV, which is for well-rounded schools. So that includes your STEM programming and your wellness programming, as well as the local budget. And we repeat a similar narrative for academic achievement, where I said uh, our goal is 70% of students will be proficient or above in reading and mathematics by the end of grade th three, and then remain proficient um, through the rest of their programming. That's a lofty goal, and uh, I do believe we can achieve it. Or above. What's that? Proficient or above. Or above. Yeah. And we Even currently, above. yeah, currently, the range, if you look on pages three and four of each of the elementary schools, so if you go to any of the, the ones where it says like page three of 13, mm -hmm. page three and four, it shows these, the scope of our, of, our, of our outcome data for ELA and mathematics on page three and four. Some, some of the elementary yes. schools have already been over the 70%. Yes, in ELA. In ELA, in and, e and math, if you look back two, three years. Um, so this is not aggregated by school. This is district wide. They all shared the same data, gotcha. and so um, and then we're talking about um, you know using those those funds to um, train elementary teachers and provide professional development and um, continue to employ interventionists, which is how we have been using that money for several years. Um, and that we are compelled to have equity supports. And so our prioritized goal, goal is for students who are identified as living in poverty to achieve as well as students who are not experiencing poverty, um, which again is, is quite a goal because if we aggregate the data by students who get free and reduced lunch and those who do not, you see that um, although we're doing a good job, there's still room for improvement there, that those they have equity of access to uh, improved outcomes. And so that's where we're talking about the intervention and our STEM programming, which is an allowable expense for title. And um, again, I've linked here at the end the, the school improvement plans. And But again, I want to uh, compel you to not consider these our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. If you have some time, look at some strategic plans from around the state or even the nation. They're very attractive documents. They're based on values, like from the portrait of a graduate, and each one is broken apart, like how might we get there? What do we need to keep doing? What do we need to add? And they're, they're really presented to the community, very much like the annual report in, a, in a, an attractive presentation that says, you know, this is, our, this is how we envision our greatness, and this is what we will do to get there. And so that, to create that project, we need, to, we need to have things that are much more accessible to the average reader than a compelled grant document, which is what this is. These documents are compelled to get federal funding. They're dry. They're great for educators, but they're not great for students, parents, and the community to say, I know where we're going. Um. <clears throat> So you need these in order to get the title. Funds. Yep. <laughs> um, what is the, does the state follow up to the federal government to make sure you're doing those things? How is, how is it, how do they check up on this? Because you can say all this, Yep. but so, then who checks up on it? Is it the state, the Department of Ed through the state, or is it the federal? Yes, the state employs a grant manager for each of the titles, mm -hmm. right? And they um, compel us to create reports and to uh, meet with them on you know regular basis to say how we're doing on what we said we would do um, and do grant reporting. So the federal government gives 
portions to the state and then each state gives out portions to each district and the state is compelled to document compliance and report back to the federal government. Good question. Thank you for this. My pleasure and I need to compel you to please uh, approve um, this um, or ask me for revisions which I'm happy to do as I would like to have be able to submit this to the state um, as soon as they open the portal which has not yet been opened for applying for this money. Um, it is a part of our It's about $500,000. It's money we, we, we rely on. Yeah. Okay. My only thing is I just and this may be accurate but on page 13 of the Randolph Elementary School one. Yes. Um, Linda Lubel is still listed as the individual to contact for if a language translation or other accommodation needs to be made, please contact Linda. And Kyle's listed on all the other elementary school ones. Thank you. So, sorry. Good job, Katja. Um, when, by when do we need to approve this? It's part tonight of our consent then. agenda tonight. Oh, great, yeah. Have it's the last time to actually read through it? Or do we just approve it without reading it? Generally, with this, um, the so the only that part that will be that will this is the only this these four pages are the only pieces that will be shared with the state. Okay, that these, Heather just brought us through those four okay. pages. This, what this packet, these are internal documents. Okay, um, but uh, honestly, they should be right because they could be they could be requested by anyone, and we wouldn't consider them private. You know, our, our thinking on where are we academically and where are we with uh, equity, we would share these. So I really appreciate the typos and all of that. But this smaller document is what I need to submit to the state. Okay. Um, and we'll review that later. Did you find it? Did you report it's where part you of found the typo? She said page 13. So anything that's that's the school, the district has to Page 13. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Federal rules. Yep. A lot of times, at the board by law, well, kind of okay. okay. There it is. More of like a right. So, if you have concerns about it or yeah. questions about it from her presentation just now, now is the time to ask. I got it. All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Policy decisions: mm -hmm. unlawful harassment. Or harassment, however you prefer to oh. pronounce it. The second read again. There's no. This was an update from uh, the SBA, Vermont School Board Association. Um, they typically contract out to Pietro and Heather Lynn, who are our attorneys anyway, um, to do this for the state. Um, there are no substantive changes to the policy. It's mostly wording changes. Um, and so what this does is it, it actually, it's, it's helpful because the wording changes make the process to be followed a little clearer than in the previous version of the, of the report. Um, I'm in the middle of going through and, and checking these uh, this year. I'm looking forward to April vacation because that's when I'll do a lot of the, got the free time to actually sit and just look at this for a couple hours and just get it wrapped up. That it does sound vacation. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, it's, ni it's nice when I was teaching. That's what I do. Vacations are great. You get caught up on everything. So. But this is a state of required, right? This, this, is, this is a required policy. Yeah. And our second reading, mm -hmm. does um, anyone have concerns, questions, need clarification? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. So moved. All second. Moved by Katya, seconded by Ann. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Legislative update. Yeah, the only big one, I, I put that in the, um, the superintendent's report as well, was the S204. Um, there's been a focus on literacy instruction, like like we were talking about a little bit earlier with the ends. You know, compared to other states, you know, Vermont performs down here. Um, mm -hmm. Literacy, they're starting to realize, is becoming a, a fairly significant problem because if you cannot read and write well, you do not have access to all the other disciplines that are taught within a school system. And so they're having a really strong focus right now on grades K through three. Um, and 
trying to uh, ensure that districts are basically screening kids in each of those grades to see if there's any deficiencies, putting them on a plan um, to address those deficiencies if they're discovered, you know, reporting to the parents if they're discovered, um, making sure that that information is publicly reported every year uh, for accountability purposes. And then they are tasked with, the AOE is tasked with putting together a full professional development program, which will be quite extensive to train all current teachers um, in you know, proper literacy instruction um, because it really does kind of run the gamut. And so they may either develop it, it themselves or they have been authorized also to go out and find a vendor to, to supply it. Um, and so those are things that are coming. And that one I put in there, that's, that's been the biggest topic of discussion lately, and that's the one that may have the most impact on the district um, at this point in time. I'll, I'll Although through. our district has been, We've been doing, it anyway. doing the yeah. more up-to-date, the phonics-based yep. literacy, which is, I don't know, well. I, mean, no, I got it, yep. You, it, I know it. Catherine, so Catherine has it been. It went out of style, and then yep. it's back. And it has then, been exceptional um, in terms of being ahead of the curve on this. Uh, going all the way back to the work that um, she was doing with the Stern Center and brought in. If you look at our testing data, and maybe I'll put this in there for uh, the next round of the ENGS report in May. Mm -hmm. um, if you take a look at the early grades, um, I've got little charts that show how they're comparing at each grade level relative to the state. Um, what you will see is grades uh, three and four. Um, are way up here compared to the state. And then the other grades are ahead of the state, but not quite as much, not, not quite as dramatically. And that most likely is due to the uh, whole day preschool that we put in about four, four or five years ago. Right? And so you're seeing those students getting a really strong foundation, so they're better able to access uh, the, the curriculum and grades, you know, one, two, three, four, all, all right. the way up. And so you will expect to see those rises each year as the kids are ticking up through the ranks. Well, I'm happy to hear that since my little girl is growing up at this program. Yeah, she having a good time? <laughs> yeah, Pat's been, been awesome. She's uh, here Sarah. Yeah, Sarah's wonderful. So that, that's the big update for legislation right now. We won't even talk about the Secretary of Education. Right. Don't have to, we can. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? No, I just, I was just connecting with you on concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't want to prejudge, but there, there seems to be an agenda there, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. People can read it for themselves. I sent the article around, but, you know, take out of it what you will. Yeah. Um, consent agenda, a couple of things. Um, Katya has a note on the minutes. The administrative contracts, I know you emailed, we don't have those tonight, right? So we'll take that out of the consent agenda, please. Um, for next. Um, so let's start with the minutes. Katya, you have some, a note on uh, the minutes? Uh, the only thing I think um, I noted was on the executive session notes, um, the motion, we ha we did make a motion, um, and I think that was, I know I made the motion, and I think that was seconded. I think it was seconded by Sarah. I think it just belongs up. Yeah, it just belongs up there, there. which is fine. Because then we went out, and then we went back in. This is in the first one. Yeah. First. Oh, this was the first one. So, yes. So, so this is, yeah. So this is good. It just looks, it just, we just need to. Yeah. The names that are in the lines that are the say ones that made the motion and a second of the emotion, second of the emotion, not to second adjourn the motion, not to adjourn, yeah, <laughs> not to adjourn, but for uh, the motion that was made there. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we figured it out. Good. Everyone's ignoring Never us mind. anyway, so oh, we're good. all good. Okay, okay. <laughs> just like usual. <laughs> well, what do you, what do you, how do you want to do that next time? Well, what was tricky about it, so Ryan, when a motion is made in that section yeah. is where who moved and who seconded goes. And and the motion. And the motion. All goes kind of freestyle written as a narrative. In the ones that have spaces to insert a name, those are the motion to adjourn. and second to adjourn. 
Sure. So up here would have been <clears throat> Katya moved that this motion. Oh, and Sarah consented and that, um, seconded that motion. And it oh, was good. and the vote like if it was a unanimous and it or, unanimously yeah. passed and all that yeah. stuff. Okay. And then down here is just the adjourned. But what was confusing about this one is we actually didn't adjourn at that point. Yeah, we that was a tough one. So we went back in. Oh, session. We did a double header. That's so an me. understandable That's on me as bad coaching. Yeah. <laughs> Get a new mentor. <laughs> All right, great. I'll sit by you this time. We'll just blame we'll just blame I was Sam. A terrible clerk. That's easy. Yeah, this good. Okay, it's all Sam's fault. <laughs> good. One, one more reason why. <laughs> um, the professional <laughs> contracts are all right here. They're signed. Good. But let's pretend they're not signed until you all approve them. We all approve them. They are signed. Um, the auditor, anything to say there? Stay with the same we just group. need one. Yeah, so it's, it's the only one we have. Um, we're trying to get them in to do the report in May. <laughs> April was we actually had a couple of years we did it in April, uh, but it's difficult because it's also tax. <laughs> yes. So. Um, facility reserve funds request. Is Bob still on? No, he, he was for a bit. I wondered if that's what he was waiting for, but we can go through it. Yeah, I don't think I, think we, can I don't think we need, think we need him back. He, you yeah. know, we can just let him know if or when it passes. Um, but do you want to talk about it? Sure. I, I've actually got them here because they had quite a few. So they, there are two rather large ones, one for 125000 and another for 190000 um, One chunk of that money is for the installation of the new playground um, at RES. Uh, the other chunk is actually to purchase the playground structures. Um, so that's why there's two of them. Let me go down the list here. The door Heather can always jump in as well because I know the door locks, the stay buckets, and yeah. the equipment. loading door. Yeah, the loading so the sixty-three thousand. Those are the lockdown security locks. Those are the where they actually put the slot in the floor. They have a little key they drop in the slot. It's yeah. literally at the bottom of the door, so that they can't force the door open. Um, and so that's part of the work that they've been doing in terms of emergency preparedness. Um, they also had the. Uh, the buckets, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, buckets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and those are the what they call the go buckets. Um, they're usually okay. preserved in a classroom. Um, they have all oh, sorts right, of little right, right. pieces in there to help the out. Meeting. What's mm -hmm. that? Yeah, you told us about this the last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I don't know why they're ordering as many as they are because it's usually one per classroom and one per office. Um, but there, my guess is they're probably right, um, but they're saying 275. Um, do we have a sense of how long those buckets will last? They're usually, the ones I'm familiar with, um, it, at least usually 10 years. Um, and then there's only certain parts of it, you know, the food food items you might need to be replaced if you have food items in it. Yeah. But a lot of it lasts a really long time, like a stop the bleed kit or a tourniquet. Yeah, for, for, so for first aid. Are they ordering enough for each classroom? Or are they ordering enough to have, like, the goal a is every supply classroom has one. left? So we have two hundred and fifty mm -hmm. classrooms. Yeah, and that's offices. that's one that I would I would double check to be honest with you. Um, now that I'm looking at it, um, that seems like a lot to me. Unless they're trying to have some extras, or in each other the, space where people may be. And the way you explained this was. These are for students to walk down with. There are supplies to walk down with. Mm -hmm. They can go to the bathroom with some equipment in these buckets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Presumably, there's food. Each bucket costs what was it, two hundred twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, Let's make them come in and do a presentation and show us what they look like. I think that's a great there. idea because <laughs> there's. I feel like we've got questions about. I have questions about these, especially around precedent of using them. Do we have successful? Success stories. They're, with these? they're common in, in most schools. Yeah, but like, we, we we can talk about that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because I, I would like to hear about potentially maybe a a situation where they were utilized well, you know, in a school that experienced an emergency. So since it's seven thirty, sorry. No, I'm just wondering. Give him a call. Can, oh. Get him because yeah. he was on the phone. <clears throat> what do you what do you worry about? I'm just I don't know if this is necessary. It's a it's a pretty significant expense. We don't know when they expire. 
We don't know if they've been used successfully in the past. Before we spend $70,000 on this, I want to make sure that this is a useful thing. Um, that's not a... He didn't answer. Um, I'd like to speak to it. Um, uh, we've been uh, engaged all year in ALICE professional development. That's a, an emergency response protocol, ALICE. Um, we meet um, every two weeks to discuss um, ongoing professional development, ongoing ways that we might uh, mitigate risk, mm -hmm. reduce student trauma yep. in the case of an emergency, and be the most prepared. And support so, options based. Yep, and situations. conduct option based drills, which means we don't tell you what to do. We don't say evacuate. No. We, we say something you. along the lines of there's an unknown intruder by the preschool classroom. Mm -hmm. Respond. And so people down there might lock down and people here might escape. That's an option based drill. In these conversations, um, it has become clear that many of our faculty members are very concerned about how they might care for a cohort of students in a real emergency that are, they are locked down with. Yeah. What would you really do with nine preschool students for three hours, mm -hmm. right, if you didn't have an ensuite toilet, right? Sure. What would you do? Garbage can? Right? What would you do? And you start to think about these things. What would you do if you had a student that you needed a tourniquet? I don't know, a belt? Mm -hmm. It gets really scary really fast. So while I understand your concern that this may, and you do deserve a presentation from, um, you know, our facilities person on exactly what's in there, because I don't know, I asked him to pull it together, and I don't think there, I don't see an itemized list here. Um, but I would, I do believe that these are an important measure both for the wellness mm -hmm. of our staff to feel like, okay, we could do this, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But also um, mm -hmm. for the, the well being of our children if they were in this situation for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's my position on that. Thank you. My pleasure. So Heather, can I ask a question? Of course. Um, so part of the thinking behind these kits is really around trauma mitigation, that if there were a, an event, a catastrophic event, with young children involved, or high school students involved, that you're able to create an area of safety where they're a child able to regulate utilize the bathroom and have some sort of homeostasis and manage better through that horrific event with kind of the goal of being sort of better long-term outcomes from the trauma from an event like that. Is that, am I right. summarizing yeah. that correctly? And they'll, they'll, you know, yeah. there would be tools to get to be able to smash the glass oh, that's and the clear it so that the ragged pieces aren't there. So if they have the, the the overall, the, the primary goal is, is to get the heck out of the building and get, get, get away as far as possible, right? If, if you can, and it's safe to do so. And to be able to, you know, have the tools to be able to do those things quickly and effectively. Um, so that would be some of the things that are in there as well. Um, you know, there might be straps to be able to tie things down to help them if they try to barricade a door, um, to hold the pieces in place, things like that. Uh, but I, I think it would actually be kind of cool for them to come in and just show us what yeah the whole looks like. I, I think, again, I just have a few questions about that. Is there a successful precedent for this? Give us an example of these being used well. When do they expire? How often are we going to have to spend $70,000 on this? And again, why, why 275? Is that yeah. how many classrooms we have? Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, is there some kind of required training and the cost associated with the required training yep. for the teachers to? Utilize them. Yeah. How many, how many uh, professional development hours or whatever this would be for them uh, to learn how to use a, a bug in bucket. Yeah. Well, so so like the stop the bleed kits, um, which are really important. Um, you know that there is training that should go along with it. They should also be aware that when you get those kits, that you need to open them up and take them all out of the wrappers because if somebody is bleeding out in front of you and it takes you five minutes to get the pieces out of the kit to stop the bleeding, it's probably mm -hmm. already too late. Cool. Um, and so that is important training that has to go along with it. 
Are these being assembled in-house? Yes, we looked at some prepackaged ones and um, we determined that uh, they were very expensive, the prepackaged mm -hmm. ones, um, or they were very cheap. There was like mm -hmm. two yeah. options, <laughs> one that just do it. And we know that if it's on the second floor, we need to include a, a rollout ladder. And if it's in a room that has windows that don't open, we need to include these strike things. And so Bob and Wes determined it was best to build the kit based on the room and the age of the children in the room. So we are building them in-house based on needs of each room and classroom. So that's an average cost per? Yep. Sounds like it's been well thought out. Well, they're both, they're both uh, high-end trainers for Alice and the emergency preparedness programming. I mean, honestly, we hope we never need them. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like. Um, I mean, on the trial litigation, I think it's cheap money. Like, I'd be game to send it through. Yeah, and I mean, if I can speak freely, I had a mem family member that was at Dartmouth when there was a shooting in the ICU, and there were people in closets for eight hours, mm -hmm. and those are adults who have medical training, and. Um, you know, our children children are not born with skills to manage a crisis like that. Mm -hmm. They look to us adults for that. So I think it sounds like it's been really well thought out. I am curious about what's in them, but I, I'm with Sam. I think $70,000, or you're talking millions of dollars of health care money over the course of a lifetime for children to, to manage a traumatic event like that. So... Yeah, and, you know, there may be EpiPens in there. My guess is there's yeah. probably gel in there in case you have a diabetic. Yeah. Um, so what, now well, the that's EpiPen, a good, yeah. that brings up like, an interesting thing. Someone who thing. has to get them a lot, <laughs> not for myself. Who's going to monitor they these? They expire. Yeah, these yeah. bins and to go they're through. they're pricey. Oh, yeah. But that they might and they might not. So, again, the, we may have questions on the content of them, but mm -hmm. if they belong, if I think... What we need to decide now is if this is something we do not feel comfortable approving the cost for because we don't know what the contents are, or we're curious about the content, but understand, you know, accept that this is the expense. I think that's what we and remember that the line we have we have given this administration the executive limitation to keep our children safe mm -hmm. and our staff safe. They're they're judging that and we have with money. and yep. th we have policies that say tell us how you're spending the money don't have a rationale for why you're spending it so getting into the weeds of what's in the if you're curious that's great but you can go down and ask us to look at sure. it but I don't think that that's not the level that the board is looking at the board is looking at do you have a protocol do you, are you keeping our children safe do you have a procedure do you have ways of making sure that you're training your staff because remember part of our treatment of staff is your staff are trained you have these buckets if you so in that treatment of staff policy we should see in that report the monitoring report our staff have training on how to use the buckets that's what say, we need. I we do appreciate. I appreciate the need. question. I appreciate the. Yes, like, I think it's important. What's in there that expires, and how often is this, does this need to be, like, reviewed? No. You know? Right. Pointing out things that aren't our responsibility, but very, you know, yes. make sure that the team is thinking about these things, because that's what we're approving. That's part of the funds we're approving, right? Is right. the but, yeah. labor that mm -hmm. went into making them. Making them. Um, that's part of what we're approving or not approving. Yes. So this is I am going to leave it in there. This is, the consent agenda is generally one we try to do as a as a kit and caboodle. The continuous improvement plan is in there as well. Um, we are please remember we are taking out the administrative contracts. We'll see we'll see them on a different consent agenda. Um, so I will entertain a motion at this time to approve the consent agenda items one, two, four, five, and six. 
I move that we accept the consent or approve the consent agenda. One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three. No. Or one, two, four, five, and six. I'll second. Moved by Anne, seconded by Emil. Further discussion? I do have one thing. Great, sorry. Um, this is more of a direct question for Lane with our, so our facilities reserve amount, or the current amount is approximately 1.4 million. This vote tonight, 2.4 million. it says 1.4 on our, it does, yeah. 1.442919 is what it says here. Okay. Um, I was looking at, I was looking at last month, so. Oh, that's fine. Um, so this would leave us with a little, like 900,000 roughly. Do we anticipate any other major requests in the next, you know, as like a new roof coming or something yeah. like that that we feel like? <laughs> no, so yeah, that's actually a really good question. So what we try to do um, is keep enough in there for a roof replacement. Um, the replacement of the RES roof was about 800,000 and that included all the mechanicals that were up there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the high school roof was replaced in 2017-2018. Um, RES is a couple of years old and then the two little schools have metal roofs so they're good for 50 years. Um, the RES and RUHS roofs are good for 20 years. So you got, got quite a window there. Yeah, I was just curious, yeah. I mean if we're approving close to half a million dollars tonight of reserve fund, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have anything looming yeah. on the horizon. No, it's, it's, it's a really good question. Gonna... There's also, um, it's things that we've talked about over the course of the last couple of years. Um, as the tax rates go up and the legislator kind of fights about legislature fights about the best ways to you know provide for education funding there's always the concern that they might come after or do something in terms of reserve funds that districts have i mean we're sitting on about six million mm -hmm. in reserve funds and um, for different things yeah. things and so it would not mm -hmm. be great to have that there if the state came in one day and we're taking it um, i don't think they they can it would take a legislative action to do but yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you. So we've, no we've, more we've actually tried to spend some of them down a little bit because of that. Or like Norris coming through. Yeah. 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 Frozen, we've got to get a new furnace. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Don't just kidding. It. I'm just kidding. Um, so I do have a motion on the table and a second. Little discussion there. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Consent agenda passes unanimously. Um, does anyone have questions for Lane on his superintendent's report? Or Lane, do you have anything? Yes. <coughs> I spent a, a, probably a little bit of time, just a lot of it was to clear my own thoughts, to talk about the potential mm -hmm. in terms of education over the next uh, 10 years. Um, especially after the impact of Act 127, which restructured the ed funding formula this year. There are really only two kind of high leverage pieces, um, levers that the state can actually pull. Um, one of them is consolidation of facilities and services, right? You know, you, as we were looking at, you know, on average, there's about seven different buildings um, for every district in the state of Vermont. Um, there would be significant savings if those buildings were all consolidated into one building that's a central campus, or two, if uh, you know you're in a, in a place that's very geographically um, separated. Um, and I have a feeling it would not be unexpected that the state starts to move down that line. Um, it seemed to me when I came in in 2017 and they were doing the forced mergers between the district that that was the first step and the second step was after they got them together was to get them to cut the small schools and start to consolidate the buildings for the, the savings that would come from it. So I have a feeling that after this year with all the budgets that fail that those discussions may come up again. The other piece that may come up again and, and might actually be a legislative mandate in the future um, is uh, student staff ratios. And I, I used our student staff ratio at RUHS as an example at 7.3. So if you walk down the hallways in the high school, um, what you're going to see in most classes, again, that's the average, not all, you're going to see between seven and nine kids per class. And so that's about half of what the, the national ratio is. 
um, the Vermont ratio on average is about 12 um, right right now as it currently stands. So you might see some movement um, to either put pressure on districts to increase the ratio to something that's a, a, a little bit more uh, manageable and realistic, um, or you might see a mandate to do it. Um, it would be difficult if they put it on the backs of the superintendents and the districts to make those determinations um, because it will be a huge fight with the unions, understandable. Oh, yeah. um, so if they were going to do it, you know, the preference would be then you, you need, to, as the legislatures, you need to just mandate it. Tell us what we need to do and we'll do it. Um, that way they're not coming after uh, the, the administration for, you know, trying to right size things. But again, maybe wrong, but given kind of what we've been through in the last year in terms of budgets across the state, how things have been expanding, um, I have a feeling that those are going to be things that sometime over the course of the next 10 years that are going to probably be on the table for discussion. So just trying to look ahead a little bit. Is the term community schools floating around superintendents yet? Uh, I haven't heard the term, but I've got my yeah. next superintendents meeting I um, know. coming up in, a, in about a week. I mean, I've, I've heard the term before, but I haven't heard it. Lately? Lately, yeah. What makes you bring it up, Sam? <clears throat> Oh, just inside just, baseball. Just dinner no, conversation? No, that's like Jason Gibbs' big thing, and he's... Uh, I mean, research shows they, they, they uh, do Jesus improve stuff. student outcomes. Yeah. But it's a model that could be reproduced in a much higher enrollment than we have. Yeah. Like, the term community schools can, is a model for excellence, but it can be applied to... A much higher population school. Yeah. If you if you take a look at like a, a possible central campus, you know you have a central circular tower that's in the middle that houses the things that the students can use in common, like the cafeterias and the libraries and the gym facilities. Right, those can be shared, and you might have a wing that goes off in this direction. That's your elementary level, a wing that's the middle school level, and a wing that's the high school level, so that those uh, students are kind of physically separated for for most of the time and they can adopt the models that are best um, you know to serve those those students at those ages especially the middle school model that's one that's missing in Vermont the way that things are structured there's a lot of I mean those kids are going through so many changes between puberty and in terms of the level of learning that they're expected to do there's so many additional supports that those kids need to make to go make the transition from being very supported by the elementary teachers in elementary school to being you know they're getting support but they're pretty much on their own and making their own decisions at the high school um, and that's where in the state of Vermont you see the biggest dip in, in grades is in, in that middle school range because we don't have a true middle school model in most places. So, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Cool. No, it's good. It, it's, I like it. It helps me think. Yes. Uh, do, do, do. Financials? Anyone? They're in good what shape. It's not official. Um, Robin is working on what the surplus is this year. It won't be as big as previous years. I think she's estimating about eight hundred thousand, maybe up to nine hundred. Mm -hmm. The previous years it was, you know, one mm -hmm. one point two, yeah. one point four mm -hmm. million. So um, bad. I expect that that will change um, with the. This is the last year of the uh, the ESSER fundings. Um, prior to all the grant grant funding, this district usually had a surplus in the three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's still good. Okay. Staff appreciation update, Mr. Hooper. On it. Um, so Sarah and I talked, sorry she can't be here. Um, we have currently Wit and Grit on board, Weebird on board, uh, Short Notice on board. Oh, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Chef's Market? Uh, talking to chefs tomorrow, talking to village tomorrow. Uh, we have third branch on board, although that's a higher price point. Third branch? Pottery. Oh, have you tried uh, what about Weebird? 
Ooh, brainstorm. I mean, um, That's a good idea. Brainstorm arts. Wendy Lane. Yeah, w Wendy Lane is on the list to talk to this week. Um, but anyways, I guess one thing that would be helpful for us is we're trying to like share the love, but also, yeah. you know, figure out what's manageable in terms of how many sets of gift cards and what's going to be the most appreciated by the teachers, so staff. Yeah, and just putting on my other hat for a moment, to keep in mind that for small businesses, gift cards, while often the biggest return on them is like word of mouth and marketing and things like that, mm -hmm. um, financially is, is, is a tricky thing. So just to, to um, if you do spread it out more and each one is responsible for less, that's appreciated as well. That's so welcome. I appreciate the long list, although I understand the, <laughs> the need to reel it in. I get it. And different price points. It's a tricky thing. Are we, so we're considering different price points? That's what we're doing? Well, no, I think, I think, you, I I think, think you we can. have to keep yeah. the price yeah. points yeah. consistent, yeah. Say. but yeah. the use application changes. You know, if you can go into wet and grit and get $10 off your I meal yep. versus yep. you go into um, third branch pottery and yep. you, uh, yeah. you may need a new mug at this price point or you may want to buy something a higher value mm -hmm. item and get 10 bucks up so but it's my understanding that the staff Trade. trades mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. they all figure out kind of what's the best for them anyway so i'm and to reiterate from past years as well there can be no language about expiration mm -hmm. or Co usage correct date. yeah because it's current it's a form of currency illegal. yeah it's illegal so, and the, the challenge for a business owner is they got to carry it on their, bound, on their general ledger. But if it never gets renewed, then, I don't know, we love those people who buy gift cards at Christmas for folks and then they get lost. And no, <laughs> no, no, that's not income. I know. That's in limbo. We right. do not it's, like those people. No, no. <laughs> Those people hurt us. Yes. <laughs> this is how you, you guys get the chunks. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there's a way to just when when we give them that we sort of encourage people to use them, yeah. Yeah. and if not, treat them <laughs> something else. And yeah, we like yeah encourage so you to that. use it, or if you're not if you don't yeah. if you don't know, pass it along to someone who. who yeah. yeah. And hey, here's a reminder if you haven't used yours from last year, please use it. Combine them. Now you have more. <laughs> You've got people like hoarding them for years. Just waiting, waiting. <laughs> now he's being selfish right now. Thank you for okay. doing that. Yeah. Thank you for yes. putting the time in. Uh, so, anyways, I just need some direction on what needs to happen next here. Do we need to put this on the agenda to fund, to get the funding, or are we pulling this out of? School board reserve budget. Isn't there a, isn't in the there a budget? budget? It? It's in the budget somewhere. Yeah. So you just need to know how much money you have to use in the budget line. Okay. That's yeah. That's right. Yeah. That would that was sent. Get some Didn't we send it? Just to you guys. Yeah. Um, I guess it didn't have. It has the total from last year. And then last year, how did? We do, do so last like year, invoice wise. <clears throat> last year we got um, like the businesses gave us the cards okay. if, they, if they had them. Some businesses don't didn't have like a little help me out like credit card the plastic yeah, yeah, cards yeah. Um, and then because I was still where I was, I was able to get um, the little um, printouts made. Like a we had a we had the printouts already from the year before. Um, like in a PDF file, yeah. Um, and we use those just to change who was involved, um, but I don't have access to those files anymore. Okay, so I just, but then to actually get the businesses paid, 
We invoice. We just they yeah they invoice, invoice the and it goes to the district. Got it. Okay. Um, so like when I went to go pick up the cards, I just said please have an invoice ready for me that I can bring to the central office for payment. Perfect. Yeah. And then um, my deadline to get the cards to central office. I, I guess it goes to central office, and then you guys will distribute them okay. to building. Teacher appreciation week is in May. May eighth. May eighth. Yeah. It's the eighth. Second week of May, I think. Yeah, May eighth to twelfth. It says on here. Okay, and then you'll you'll hand them out to um, each building, and they'll distribute them from there. So when when would you like them by? Two weeks prior, Two if weeks possible. Prior. Yep. So May eighth to twelfth is a Wednesday to a Sunday. Yeah. So that was last year's. I think. So is it the sixth so to the tenth? Must be the sixth to the tenth. Guessing, yep. or mm -hmm. is it the 13th? I don't know. Somebody, we could Google it, right? There's also a question. Just Kyle, you had sent out some numbers. Um, 2024. Currently, our staff total is 345. Yeah, it's the that includes to the 10th. subs and coaches. So without them, would be 284. Yes. So just the, there's. You need to know. How many gift certificates? How many, how many did we do cards? last year? Last year, total 207, although then cards. there was a follow-up total of cards, 265. So it must not have included. Right, faculty and staff at coaches. each school. I mean, that right. kind of. Right. I think it should be. Yeah, 284. Sure. That's my number? 284. 284. Or 285. Or 285, yeah. And then my budget number is in the budget. Would be $2,840. Is that still the same? Do we know that that's still, the, that still is there? She sent this. Kyle sent this on RJD. Okay, yeah. Got it. We can do this. I can do this from here. I got this. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Great, thank you. Uh, action item uh, recap. So I'm going to send a link for the Open Meeting Laws webinar. Please watch it and think about it uh, by next meeting. Subcommittees, ends, and ownership linkage. Please meet before the next meeting and be prepared to report out. It can be a quick report out. Um, those are open meetings. Mm -hmm. Please warn them. Um, let's see. I will s s um, coordinate with Heather, Kyle, and uh, Kara to reschedule her presentation. Um, Bd diddy. I think that's it for mm -hmm. for action items. Um, we do have a, a need for an executive session, so I will, uh, with no other business that I'm aware of, entertain a motion to enter executive session. Are we oh. bringing yes. all present? Mother yes. Kyle? Okay. Yes. And it's personal? And it's personal. I don't personal. have my little cheat sheet of what, which one that is. Mine's fine when came in the mail. Oh, good. Oh, he wants it. Oh, okay. uh, so I'll move to enter executive session at 7:59, <clears throat> inviting in uh, Lane Millington, and Heather Lawler, um, for which one is it? This uh, one? Uh, no. Yeah, it's a oh, this one. Number, but yeah. Uh, VSA 313A3. Um, VSA 313A3 statute. Okay. Thank you for the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Emil seconds. Uh, all those in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? And I'm going to abstain on Anne's behalf because she's run to the powder room. Mm -hmm. So it does pass by majority. We will enter executive session at 8 o'clock.
Public session. Uh, we, so we exited at 8.33, um, and with no action to take, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Katya. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night.